My name is Sue Yendel and I'm the Director of the ACTIVE project which stands for Advancing Telecare for Knowledge of Independence and Vitality in Later Life. We wanted to develop a piece of research with a wide range of partners which would look at both the challenges that come from population ageing and the opportunities which come from advancements in technology. I went home one weekend to see my mum who's 86 and she's got a pendant. And I said, do you ever press it? She said, no, no, I don't want to bother anybody. I said, it's really important to regularly check it. If you keep getting an inappropriate response, yeah. you'll stop pressing it. Yeah, because yeah. You'll, absolutely. You'll be embarrassed yeah. And, yeah. and worried and yeah. feel humiliated yeah. by the trouble you're causing your neighbours and friends or mm. family or whatever. And this couple were kept being, both of them were in and out of hospital, and they kept being discharged. And the woman couldn't move herself once she got into bed. And so she was sliding down the bed and getting uncomfortable. And every time she couldn't move, because her husband wasn't strong enough to move her, she was dialing 999. Mm. And she hadn't got any telecare. The project was developed in partnership with the University of Oxford. We've had a team of researchers, but we've built the project also around a partnership in Venture Limited and Tunstall Healthcare UK Limited. Tunstall is proud to partner Leeds and Oxford Universities as part of the ACTIVE project as it particularly promised to deliver unparalleled insights into the lives of users and their care network. The ACTIVE programme have given some fantastic insight into some of the barriers and the opportunities that exist in trying to mainstream telecare and deliver it at larger scale. The main centrepiece of the ACTIVE project was repeat visits to older people with telecare. So what we aspired to do was visit them six times between six and nine months. People were put off by the way the products looked. They weren't particularly desirable aesthetically, but they felt there was a trade-off between what the product could do for them in terms of enabling them to live at home versus how it made them look and feel. Clearly, inappropriate equipment can get purchased because we've already said you've bought lots of equipment that fails and you have to send it back. So we know that goes on. The question is then, why is that happening? Um, and are there ways in which we can improve it? The project, with the researchers going in for such a long time, it gave us a fantastic view of what this piece of equipment was doing for somebody. All well, the research team have this information and using that information to carry forward as well. It's helped me to get a lot of things within our service and to also look at how are other people doing it as well. One of the things we found was that by looking at what people are actually getting up to in their homes, how people are supporting people with telecare, how people are using telecare, we found very, very quickly that a lot of it could be improved if you want to really improve the system. People get confused in using it and often end up not using it because of that. Well, one of the things with designers is that I always ask them two questions which say, when they present me with a particular bit of technology, I say, who isn't this designed for? Because if people can't answer that, they haven't really thought who it is designed for and haven't really done their design job properly. What happens when it fails? What's the effect, not just on the technology, but on the people that should be using it? And the challenge is now for the industry to take on this research and really make sure that services and products are developed to, to lead to better outcomes, better lives, safer lives for, for users. The project uh, was looking uh, not only at uh, some of the social uh, challenges uh, of uh, taking uh, assistive living technologies uh, into the market, uh, but also at uh, uh, the commercial uh, barriers uh, uh, to entry. I opened the conference by talking about the individual and how policy actually needs to focus more on the individual to actually deliver bespoke solutions in the community. There's been some fantastic innovations over the last few days around technology and also around service provision. It's not often you get a conference where you get all the right people in the room at the same time and for me that's been a very special thing about this active conference. It, it reflects what we try to do with the study, but actually to see it all come to fruition here is quite extraordinary. And to, make, to have those kind of moments when you see everybody suddenly on the same wavelength. I've learned so much in the past two days about all the other uh, pro projects that were funded by the TSB during the same call as us. I've also got a really good perspective on different telecare services and the different benefits 
and perhaps um, challenges faced by telecare and the opportunities for it to develop in the future. What's been so brilliant about the Active Project for me is the everyday life analysis because of the way the team have talked to older people and their families. They've really found out what their lives are like. So it's not like the official visit when they say, yes, yes, the telecare's fabulous, thank you so much. Actually, along the way, we found out that they don't wear it, they don't like it, it's ugly, or they've fallen off a chair and not told their daughter. And so I think we've had this extraordinary range of really, really rich stories from people themselves. The Active Project was for brilliant for organizations like Tunstall in the industry. Not only did it confirm long-held suspicions like the potential of stigma attached to telecare, but it provided us with deep and personal insight into issues surrounding the greater caring network of telecare users. There's clearly a key market here driven by an aging population, by, by critical illnesses being met by that population, by the demands of care and with, as we've seen according to the EU, a decline in healthcare professionals. There are some very, very exciting things happening in this world and machines, I think, are going to play a much bigger role. The end user of today is hard to reach. And we all know that there is not a huge amount of older people who actually access the internet. Make it fun and inclusive. Choose the right environment and the right people, importantly, um, and make it as human as possible. So the next step is to be able to take all the knowledge that we gain as part of ACTIVE and integrate it into the development of products that are really close to what people want uh, to help them. And what's most important for us is the way that we're actually seeing not only brilliant technology being developed, but the technology actually reaching the market. For us to really get ahead of the game here, we need to have technologies that everybody wants, and they want them when they're still fit and healthy. If you wait until people need something, then it comes with a lot of stigma and a lot of other issues, which are much, much harder to sell to people. As I see it, there is a, there's a sea change happening with the technology now, in that uh, smartphones can do so much more. Uh, than, than, uh, than they could do in the past. The company called Doro, for example, that makes very good smartphones for, for older people. If they take their phone with them, that means if they fall, they can press the panic button on there. And then, of course, you've got smart meters coming along in a few years' time. Now, again, a smart meter that measures water, gas, and electricity usage will very quickly be able to detect if something's changed in that house. The pace now really needs to be stepped up we have to bring it out into an environment that people are familiar with so they virtually trip over it and can't help find out about it. What we've tried to do is to get an understanding of the lives and needs and aspirations of older people so we don't just focus on what help do they need but actually how would they like to be living their lives. We hope that the research papers that we write will be widely read by people who work in the sector but also by people who care about older people or who are old themselves.